Hi everyone, this is Lahiri from ABCs of Anesthesia. Now in one of the videos, there was an interesting request which was that I'd make a compilation video of lots of cannulations back to back and I thought, actually that's quite interesting, it's nice to not just go through all the theory but actually see multiple cannulations from different angles with different cannulas in rapid succession. So fortunately this morning, uh, it's quite a rapid turnover list, uh, it's, it's a cataract operation list, um, so I'll be doing the anaesthetic for 10 of these um, and I'll try hopefully get a few patients full consent to having the videos of the IV cannulations taken. So yep, let's get started and I hope you enjoy this video. So I just wanted to give a quick plug for some online courses that I'm creating. Um, so these courses will cover everything from IV cannulation to you know, medical students guide to anesthesia as well as some introductory topics as well as exam preparation and hopefully a lot of other things as well. Um, so I'll put some links to those courses in the story notes below and I hope you enjoy them. Thanks a lot. So for this video as we're watching these cannulations I thought I'd do a bit of commentary. Uh, so this is my first cannula of the day and again I'm using one of the, these fancy cannulas. It's a really great cannula. You don't need an IV bung to cap on the end so it just means there's less parts to be used. But as you can see I'm just so used to using a normal cannula. I've even put my thumb over approximately to stop any backflow but that's not really possible. Now I noticed as I advanced this cannula there's a bit of tethering in the skin so it's probably up against a valve so you'll notice I pulled it out just a millimetre just so it wasn't up against a valve that meant I could flush it easily. Now this cannula is an old video, it's a 14 gauge on, on my superstar friend Julian and as you can see I'm going at a really low angle, going slowly, I observe the flashback and then I really level out and you can see the, the, the I guess the upward trajectory of my cannula and that I go at least a centimetre advancement before threading the cannula. You can see the secondary flashback there, I put lots of fingers over the proximal part of the cannula that's just to make sure there's no blood flow back and then I screw on the um, IV bung and as always you know you want to flush all these cannulas in a lot of these videos I'm not showing the flushing just because I end up doing that with some medications very soon after. Now this is one of those difficult cannula videos um, that I've already got up on YouTube I can put a link to that as well and you know often you'll be told that the wrist is not a place to go and it's, it's almost always true I mean the wrist is not that comfortable for, for a patient the veins are very small very fragile but sometimes that's the only vein that I've got to go for and it's such a short procedure for cataracts that it's completely reasonable to use this for a temporary period of time. You know, this, in some patients you can find really large veins that are very stable, not fragile, and so you, know, you can actually keep it for as long as you know, the vein holds up. Again, with these, with these cannulas, whichever, whichever site you put a cannula into, you want to review that cannula every day, make sure that's working and make sure that each injection is also working. And this was another, it wasn't exactly a difficult cannula, it's a very visible vein, it can put, probably put a 20 and even an 18 gauge through that. But again, just for the purpose of demonstrating, you can see that my knuckle for tensing the skin is over the ridge of the knuckle, so it doesn't impair my low angulation of the cannula. And because it's so superficial, you can see my angle, it isn't even five degrees, it's almost p parallel to that vein, because I know that this, this vein is really superficial. You'll see that in some of my other cannulation demonstrations in the cubital fossa, the vein is just marginally deeper, so I've got a steeper angle, even 5 to 10 degrees. Now just to highlight the fact that my grip is very specific, you know, it's thumb and middle finger, it allows me to visualize the flashback, and then I can push off the cannula with my pointer finger. There's very little change to my structures. So here's a cubital fossa vein. So I can barely see that vein, but I can feel it, so that's one that I had to palpate, I couldn't really see. Again, I'm being really careful in that cubital fossa region because there are tendons, nerves, and the brachial arteries in that position. So my depth of insertion is always very narrow. This cannulation, yeah, obviously a big visible vein. Um, and again, I've gone at a low angle because it's very superficial. My thumb is out of the way. Again, I accidentally put my thumb to prevent any backflow, but really these cannulas already have a bung inbuilt, so they don't have backflow. This cannula, and I'm sterilizing the area with a Quilhex alcohol swab, making sure the patient has no allergies. And I go for a, again, palpable but not visible vein. And again, that region has lots of structures there. This particular cannula 
is not my favorite cannula. It doesn't have a bung, but it also doesn't have a safety needle and it twists around a lot when you thread it through. So I just wanted to demonstrate. And just there you saw me taking pressure off the thumb just to see that I do have backflow. And that's one of the techniques I use to make sure that I'm in the vein. So lack of backflow of blood doesn't mean you're not in the vein, but the presence of that backflow is really reassuring that you are inside the vein. Now apologies for this really poor camera angle, but essentially I'm going through a cephalic vein on the inner side of the arm, on the radial side. Now the great example here is that my ring and little finger are anchoring the hand, making sure that I don't have a tremor. It just makes my whole structure really stable. Um, again, really useful for the most difficult veins where even the slightest tremor could cause a problem and could cause a you know, puncture on the other side. You want everything to be really, really stable when you're doing these difficult cannulations. Again, I put pressure approximately, just jiggle the bung on, and then I transfer my finger only then, and I can screw it on tightly. So here's a cubital fossa vein. Um, it's not a vi visible vein, but it is palpable. So I swab the area, but then I realize I'm not really sure exactly where it is. So I retouch, repalpate, but then I have to swab that region again, just to make sure I'm using the you know, aseptic non-touch technique philosophy. Now this is again, one of those cannulas that I'm really not a big fan of. Um, and this cannula kind of rotates around as I thread it off. It's just not as stable and it's not a safety cannula. So the needle as it comes out, isn't protected by any kind of mechanism. Now you'll notice that I threaded the cannula with my left hand, which I don't normally do. I usually thread with my right hand, but in this case, it was kind of hard with this particular cannula because it just it wasn't a stable cannula. Uh, so as long as I'm in the vein, it's okay for me to take the tension off the skin and thread with my left hand. Now this cannula, so I'm palpating it just over the knuckle and that's not the ideal position. If the, ca if the cannula is kind of over the knuckle, then it's kind of more prone to trauma and getting you know, caught on things. But again, for a short case, it's completely reasonable. And this patient had very few options for cannulation. It's often one of those things where sometimes you just have to get the best vein possible, even though it's not the perfect vein. So again, this is a cubital fossa vein, and I'm using one of my favorite cannulas, which is the B. Braun Intracan Safety Cannula. It's again, a fantastic cannula, because it's very stable. At, when I advance the, the cannula, it doesn't rotate, so it's very easy to advance with my pointer finger. And again, you can see the low angle that I was using to insert that cannula, and I really wanna make sure I don't go through the opposite side of the wall. So with this cubital fossa cannulation, again, I'm using my fairy cannula, the B-Braun Intracan Safety Cannula. I um, might get my thumb out of the way, going at a really low angle, make sure I can get that low angle. And yeah, then I apply pressure proximally to make sure I don't get any blood flow back. And then I jiggle the bung on, and once it's on, then I'm able to tighten it and then flush just to make sure that's in. So you'll notice that this is the video from my very first cannulation video on my mate Julian back in 2012. Um, so here I'm just showing all the aspects of you know anchoring my hand using my ring and little finger. I've got the right grip on the cannula. I'm going at a low angle. I'm tensing the skin with my left hand, but my thumb is over the edge of the knuckle, so I can you know still get a really low angle with my right hand. That thumb isn't impeding the angulation. I'm just going really slowly. Like when you start out, it's, I think it's completely okay to go slowly. You've got to make sure that your technique is really correct. And as you get more and more experienced, you can go faster, especially with these easy cannulations. Notice that with difficult cannulas, I will still go slowly because you need time for that flashback to occur. Yeah, I'm threading with my pointer finger. Everything's pretty stable at this point. You can see that blood rushing back and I make sure that I have my thumb over at the right point. Uh, the blood flowing back means that it's in the vein and that's all working really well. You'll notice I'm really careful when I'm taking the needle out. I just don't want to remove the cannula at the same time and that's definitely happened to people. In this video, I do something here that I don't really do anymore because I'm in anesthetics and I'm constantly you know, putting a cannula in and then flushing it with some medications that are pre-medications. But yeah, generally speaking, you should always flush your cannula with some normal saline to make sure that's in and make sure that's flushing easily. In one of my videos, I go through a few techniques to make sure that you're in the right position, and I'll put a link up there as well. 
Now here's a second cannulation, again on my very good friend, um, and he's a great example of fantastic vascularity. And I'm demonstrating here that when you're starting out, it's really great to go for big veins like the one I'm showing here. Big visible veins means that it's very or less likely that you will go and puncture the other side of the wall or any of the side walls. I'm also saying that it's really great to go for bifurcations like the ones you can see just here. And that means that if you go in as the bifurcation meets that bigger vein at this point roughly here, um, it's less likely that the vein's gonna roll. So again, more chance of success. Now, uh, for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm gonna try and make these smaller veins visible by tapping. And then I'm gonna line up my cannula along the trajectory of that vein. Just remember, the axis of your needle should line up with the axis of the vein. You don't want it going to one side, because again, more chance of puncturing. Temp so I'm tensing the skin, and then I'm inserting at a point that I've chosen, you know, roughly, you know, maybe a couple of centimeters away from the knuckle, and I'm inserting along the axis of that smaller vein. Again, slowly inserting. There you see a flashback occurring, at which point I really lower my angle. I advance the needle maybe you know, four millimeters, at which point after that advancement, I then thread the plastic cannula with my pointer finger. You can see that secondary flashback, which is again proof that you're in. If you don't see that flashback, it's very likely that you're not in the right position. Release my tourniquet, as you can see, pressure proximally to stop blood flow back. Carefully take my needle out and dispose in the sharps bin and then put on the IV bung just to secure and then flush with normal saline to make sure it's in. And you can see that it's flowing really easily and that's all secure. And then secure it with a transparent adhesive dressing that's breathable just like a Tegaderm, which is the one I commonly use. So now we're gonna go through a replay of all of those cannulations, just doing some quick cuts, uh, just again in rapid succession so you can see the technique and how it's done. And hopefully this helps. So thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get to them. And then thanks for watching. Please share with anyone who might be interested. See you next time.